What's up, everybody? Travis here from Travis.media. Look on the screen and you'll see a page speed score of 100. I finally achieved it. In this video, I want to share with you the app that got me there. All right, so if you're into web development, you're learning to code, you want to level up your coding skills, or you're just looking to conquer life in general, consider hitting that subscribe button below. I have lots of great videos planned for 2020. Also hit the bell if you want to be alerted when new videos are released. So just a quick backdrop here. Going into 2020, I wanted to make my blog fast and enjoyable again. I had been on WordPress for years and I love WordPress, but it just became too bulky and had too many features that I didn't need. And by the way, I have a video on that if you want more details. But I moved over to the Ghost CMS platform. It's a Node.js CMS. It's lightning fast and my scores immediately went up. Of course, when I moved over, I got rid of a bunch of the bulk. I deleted all of those millions of images that WordPress created, image sizes that WordPress created every time I upload something, and my site just became really fast. So I had Google page speed scores of like 90 on desktop and like 80 on mobile. Wonderful. Couldn't ever get that with WordPress. I love WordPress. Again, I love WordPress, but I could never get those scores. Just too much going on. But I wanted more on the mobile side. I didn't want my mobile score to stay 80. I want it up in the 90s. How do I get my mobile score up in the 90s? Well, when I run scans, I have two main issues now. One of the issues is that on mobile phones, they're being served my desktop sized image. Now, I know you're thinking, hey, that's easy. You just need to, to define image sizes and set it in your image source. But I don't want to do that either. I don't want to upload an image and have 50 image sizes created and just have this massive media folder. I didn't want that when I came to Ghost, and I didn't know how to fix that on the Google Page Speed score. Now, the other thing is a simple fix. It's just defer off screen image loading, so I could just lazy load it. So I needed those two things fixed. Well, when I started putting solutions together for this, I came across this app on AppSumo called Gumlet. Now, I haven't bought anything from AppSumo in a while because I quit freelancing, and I just don't have a need for a lot of this stuff. But I, I, and I, and actually I saw this one and I wasn't that interested either, but a few things really enticed me. So, and you know, short pixel was on AppSumo. I didn't grab that either. I don't need it. But this one had a few extra things that I found enticing. So it not only compresses your images, but it serves your images from a CDN. So that's good for me because I didn't have a CDN and I want my media being served fast worldwide. But the main thing that really got me was that it resizes your images depending on what device you're using. So if you're on a mobile phone, you're not gonna get that desktop size image. And that's exactly what I need. So I looked into it further, I read some reviews, people had some great success with it, and I ended up pulling the trigger, and it ended up being much more than just those things. There's a lot more you can do with it. And in this video, I wanna walk you through some of the really neat things that Gumlet has, and how it can really benefit your website. So this app is currently on AppSumo for 49 bucks, a lifetime deal for $49. And like every AppSumo app, you can stack it. So if you need more than 100 gigabytes of bandwidth per month, you can stack two codes or three codes to get 300 and so forth. Pretty neat. But you can come here and uh, read all about it. There's a video here you can watch. It uh, gives you a CDN coverage map, which is like the whole world. And you can get everything you need from here. And look, it's been on AppSumo now for a little while. I don't know how much longer it's going to be on here. So watch this video, read the page, make your call. And if you happen to come to this video and it's no longer on AppSumo, go to their website. They have a free sign up. You can use it up to a certain amount of data, I think it is. But after that, you pay per amount of data used. And it's actually not a lot of money. So if it's not on AppSumo, it's still a good deal that you should pursue. I'll make sure to put links to all this below. So once you buy the app, you're going to create a profile and you're going to be sent to this page here. So um, you have a couple of tabs. So you got the general tab. So this, and this is basically where you set everything up. You have the general tab. You have your source type. Which, where's the source of your data? Well, mine's a web folder. Uh, there's also like an Amazon S3 bucket, Google Cloud Storage, things like that. Uh, web folder settings, which your base URL. Here's my base URL. Domains, you choose some kind of domain, you know, by which to serve your images. So it's going to be something.gumlet.com. I just put Travis Media. You can put whatever you want there. Next, you go to parameters. 
Auto WP, just turn it on. WP is a format that Google loves. It makes your site really fast. I don't have any problem with it. I'm turning it on. Optimize images, of course. All right, next up, we have this add parameter field. Now, this is really, really neat. So here, you can actually interact directly with their API. So if you click this reference link, it'll take you to their image APIs. And you just have a ton of options that you could choose from here. So if you come over here, it shows you the contents of this image API. It has a number of categories. You have size, image formats, color manipulations, image operations, and text. So let's say I wanted to pad all of my images and give that a like a red, that padding a red background around all of my images. Simple. I would just come over here. Let's see if we have padding anywhere. Yeah, so, so under size, I can go to pad and I, see, I can read all about it here and I can see this example. So if I wanted to add, you know, 30 pixels of padding to all of my images and make it this rose red or whatever kind of red this is, I could come up here and say pad equals this, 30 pixels for all four sides. Go back over here and find pad, choose pad, put that in, boom. I have padding on my images and background equals this. So let me copy this color. Copy that, come back over here and find background. There's background and I put in that value for my color. And now my images should have 30 pixels of padding all around with, the back, with this background. That's how you interact with the image API. And I actually haven't done a lot with it, but there are a ton of options and I'm looking forward to really jumping in and seeing what I can do with that. So let me remove that. Next, you have default images. Here's where you choose what your fallback image is if an image doesn't show up for some reason. Next, you have setup instructions. So there's two options here. So, come down, so if you go down here to option two, you see WordPress plugin. So if you're using WordPress, you just need to download this plugin and you can do a bunch of stuff from that. Um, so here's the plugin. I'm assuming that you would take your code that AppSumo gave you, put that in, it would become like a pro version or something. But anyway, you can use the WordPress plugin and it looks like you have a ton of options here and it gives you this page in WordPress by which to do stuff. So you got your CDN URL, auto format images, compress and all of that. So cool, that's neat. But I don't use WordPress, so I'm gonna show you the other way, which is the non-WordPress way, which means you don't have a plugin. So for me, I use Ghost CMS, so I'm gonna to have to insert it myself. I don't have a plugin that I can upload. And so that is option one. You use the Gumlet JS library. So here you're gonna choose a script. Make sure you don't choose the head because you're gonna put this script in the head section of your site. Most CMSs or websites that, that you use are gonna have a place you can insert this. So with Ghost, they have a code injection page. I'm just gonna take the script, pop it in my head, and it's gonna show up on all the pages. You'll have to look up how to do this, but basically you copy the script and you paste it into the head section of your site. Next, you need to rename your source tag, your image source tags to data source. Now you don't have to, but basically if you don't do this, it's going to load your image and then Gumlet is going to swap that or whatever magic that it does. And you don't kind of want that flash. So if you can change your source to data source, you're going to get that initial image from the outset. So with, Go with, with again, with most CMSs, it's going to be some kind of loop going on. It's going to be some kind of template that handles like posts or something. And you're just going to have to change one or two things. I think with Ghost, I had to change a total of like five things. And I can, sh I can actually show you real quick. So if I go to my main, like my home page, I'll go to partials and default article. You'll see here that I have this loop going on. Actually, you see the loop on another one, but this is, this is what's being looped over and over. But it says if featured image, uh, then show this image here. Well, all I did was just change this to data-src instead of source. That's all I did. And then I would go to maybe my post page. So you can come up here and just go source equals, and then maybe the first quote, hit enter. And it's gonna show you all the places. Of course, this is showing my data source. But if you don't have a data source, just do a search or something and just go through and wherever you see source, just type in data source. Again, you're not going to have to do this for every post and you know, most CMSs have some kind of loop going on and you're just going to have to find out where that image is produced every time and change that template. So that's the next step is just change your sources to data source. And once you have that done, you're done. That's all you have to do on your website. But let me give you a tip. It takes about 10 minutes for it to process your images and show up. So you may 
You may see like 10 minutes of no images on your site. So you may want to have some downtime or something. What I did was I put it on my site and then none of the images are showing up. I could see the code there that they were using their images from their CDN. And the, the URL was right to my path. But no images were showing up. I contacted support. They have a really good support crew. And what it was was we just had to give it a little time to process the images. So about 10 minutes later, everything started showing up. Everything flowed right in. So just a point of advice, do it late, you know, on an off time or just do a little downtime on your site when this happens until your images come up. Uh, next, you have cache management. Uh, so you can purge single images here. So I had to purge a couple of mine after I changed them. Uh, you can set your cache duration. And then actions over here if you want to you know, delete the source, which I don't want to do. I want to keep my source. So that's it. That's all I have to do. So let me show you the results on my site. And let me talk about a couple of other little things that I found that's really neat. So here's my site. If I, if I right click an image and open the image in a new tab, you're going to see the URL is different. So there's travismedia.gumlet.com all the way to, look at this. So there's a couple of things I wanna talk about here. First, they set the image size. So width of 480, DPR of 2.0, I guess that means it's a retina image, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Quality of 70 and a width of 480. So that's a width of 480. Let me put this on mobile. So let me switch this to like a, like an iPhone X or something. Uh, iPhone X, let me just refresh the page. And let me click the image again. And actually, you can't do that. So I'm going to look at the code here. So now it says a width of 320. So right here, width 315 by 185. So it's serving a different sized image on this mobile view. So let me talk about a couple of things. So I use Retina.js to serve Retina images on my site. So I upload a regular size image. Then I upload a double size image. And I, I have the Retina.js library there. So... For each image, it looks for that at 2x version and then serves the retina image. So I was wondering, how's it going to work with that? You know, am I going to have to take that out? And I'm still wondering if I even need the retina.js library now because I see it does have this um, DPR, look, DPR 3.0. So I see it does have this option. I need to look into that some more. But what's neat, so when it swaps my image for the retina image, Gumlet uses that image. So it has that image in its CDN as well. So here it is. It ends at 2x.jpg, and then it has the gumlet stuff. So that's really neat. So, so what I'm saying is if you use something like Retina.js or you're using some other like Retina library or maybe some manual way of doing it, it's going to detect that as well. It's going to grab that Retina image and also serve it from its CDN. That was really neat. The second thing was what about background images? That was my, my other question. What do I do about background images? Well, if you go to one of my posts, like let's, uh, let's find one like here, uh, you, you know, your background image is not a source tag. So what do they do with that? Well, if you go to the Gumlet.js documentation, you can scroll down to somewhere down here. It talks about background images. Yeah, set images background. Gumlet.js supports setting images background image for any HTML element. So all you need to do is instead of the data dash source, instead of doing this style uh, background URL and then your image that you want as your background image, you just do data dash BG equals and then your image. And then you can take that background out of your style sheet, put it directly into this HTML tag and just use the data dash BG tag. So for example, here regarding my featured images on my site, that big image is actually a background image. All I did was do data dash BG instead of source. So I have my image URL being dynamically populated here. So I use data BG. And then the default is this content uh, blog default hero image. And I just use data BG. And they handle the rest. So if we go back to my page and I look at the code for this background image, you'll see right here, data BG equals this. But they added the background image in the style attribute. So they added that for me. All I have to do is this data BG and they create this style attribute with my background image. See right here, Travis.media. Dot, or travismedia.gumlet.com and then so they serve the image here. So what I'm saying is it works with background images too, which is a big concern of mine. You know, I, I, have a, I use background images, I use regular images, I need it to work for both. And while I was discovering that, I also saw a bunch of other neat stuff. So here, um, there's some other options. Uh, automatic WebP support, which we can do from the dashboard, but you can ignore certain images by using data gumlet false. You can ignore images. 
Um, you can also do this source set, or however you pronounce it, that's how I pronounce it. You can actually set that to true, and it'll probably produce all of those different sizes. I haven't checked that yet. A web proxy. And then another big thing for me, remember at the beginning when I said that the, the Google page speed test said I needed to lazy load my images? Well, I was going to do that anyway, but hey, this app takes care of that too. Look up here. Lazy load images. So this library supports lazy loading images. All you have to do is add this lazy load true. And you have lazy loading. That, that's super simple. Now let me make a note when you use this documentation. And this is something I found. Up here at the top, it says the version 2 is now available, right? And you're inserting this script into your site, and you're using this config variable. Well, when you come down to all of these examples, it's using something different. So it's using this gmconfig, and you're putting in your configuration, and then it's calling this gumlet init gmconfig. I don't think it does that anymore, so I was wondering, like, do I need to put in this script and then also use a different script to do this? When I tried it, it I got a gumlet not found or something, and so I tried this. I just added lazy load true to this original script here. So if I go to my dashboard, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So to enable lazy load, all I did was just add a comma here and put lazy load true. So you don't have to do all that init stuff that they have in the docs. I guess they haven't updated it. But all you have to do is do lazy load true. I tested this, by the way. Lazy load is working. So that's all you have to do. And you can do that for any of this stuff in the client library. So you want to lazy load. You want to use web proxy. This, all of these values, you would just add it. Like if I wanted to make this true, I would just come over here, add a comma, and just put it right there. Just line it up right. That's all I would do. If I want to add something else, put a comma and add it right there. These are all of my values that I, that I can add to this original script. So overall, I found all of that really neat. With my images lazy loading, with my, my images resizing properly and being served from a CDN, that's what finally got me to these high numbers. So again, my page speed is 100. My mobile speed is 93, which is super I could never get it ab above the low 80s. And the only reason for that is, actually it's not showing, but I think it's due to my time to first bite, which, is probably, which probably has to do with you know, my $5 droplet on DigitalOcean. But anyway, 93 is exceptional, and again, desktop is 100. So if you want to check out my site, uh, it's super fast now. My images are being served from a CDN, and I'm very, very happy with Gumlet. And I'm looking forward to checking out all of these API options and seeing what I could do with it, and then checking these docs out for all of these different values that I can use. So really excited about that. Again, it's on AppSumo for 49 bucks as I'm speaking now. If not, it's still a deal you need to go pick up. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching my video. Hit subscribe if you enjoyed.